And I titled my message, Making Provisions for the Miraculous. How many of you want miracles? Lift up your hand. Say, I want miracles. Say it like you mean it. Now, those who are not raising up your hands, I know you even need miracles more than those who are raising their hands. Now, raise up your hand because the Spirit of God is here. Say, I want miracles. I receive my miracles today. Amen. When you want to get a thing, there are provisions you make. There are steps you take. You want to walk with God, you have to be born again first. You have to study the word. You have to believe God. Even when it doesn't make sense to believe him. When we are in church, like we are here in Mount Olive, it's not enough to come and sit and receive prophecies and dance. If God is taking records of your activities in this church, will he be pleased with you? If God visits today and said, let me see those who are helping my servant, Prophet David Dodo, will he talk to you? I'm not saying that you're not in church, that you're not singing. I'm not say, saying that you don't dress beautifully when you come to church. But are you a sheep? Or you are a caterpillar? Are you a pillar or a caterpillar in the house of God? I'm going to come to that very shortly. But you see, when we are making provisions for the miraculous, we want to be in the same arena where God can bless us. I've told you before that when you come to church, there are two things you must hold on to. It's either God blesses you or you take the blessing. And I've told us very soon the prophet of God will come up here. He will stare the waters. Even if he doesn't see any vision or prophecy for you, he's already here. The anointing is here. You can take the blessing. Say, I will take my blessings today. I didn't hear you say it. Once the prophet comes here, he's already settled with God what will happen today. And includes your own in the name of Jesus. Now, let me just read a few scriptures. A lot of believers do not know that we live in the glory days of the church. You know, when daddy shared his testimony on his birthday, it took me to, from a, a certain level of believing to a higher level. There's no one here that God cannot use. There's no one here that God cannot prosper. But your attitude towards the things of God goes a long way to determine what God will do with you. Let me just show us Isaiah chapter number 2. If somebody could read for me so it will be fast. Isaiah chapter number 2. Verse number one. Isaiah chapter number two. Isaiah chapter two, verse one. The word that is Isaiah, the son of Amos, yes. saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it came to pass in the later days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. Yes. And shall be exalted above the hills. Yes. And all the nations shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Yes. To the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Thank you. Thank you. It's in the last days. And we are in those. We are in those, that last days now. Let me tell you the truth. And you can take this to the bank. Any moment from now, 
God will come to harvest his people. The trumpet will sound. And all these your worries about the new car, the next husband, how many children to, buy, to have, and uh, whatever you think will make your life uncomfortable will mean nothing. Let me tell us something. We are in the glory days of the church. I remember those days when we are much younger. When a young man goes to ask the hand of a young lady in marriage and he doesn't appear rich, she will tell her friends, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Child, I don't suffer. If you see one church rat, we come say you want to marry me today. I don't suffer. God. You know, they used to describe the poorest man in the world said, church rat. Church rat. But to the glory of God, that narrative has changed. Yes, sir. If any rat finds his way here, that rat is made. It's rich. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, you didn't get what I said. Any rat that belongs to this, to this mount, is that rat broke? It's not broke, it's rich. So I want to be a church rat. That's why I'm here. I want to stay here. The narratives have changed. Who did it? God did it because we're in the glory days of the church. Before now, when we were in the university, in secondary school, scripture union people, daddy, they come to preach to you. You will be doing like this. Because they will be smelling and dressing funny. And they were talking like men who are so bitter with God and with man. And yet they're asking you to repent. They're asking you to come to join the life they are living. And there's nothing exciting about the life they are living. But God changed the system. Somebody say, God changed the system. God changed the system. I was bold enough to tell one of them several years when I was the second to say, if your God keeps you this way, sorry, I don't need him. But look what God has done. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible said, uh, uh, Apostle, just read for me. First Peter chapter number 2, verse number 1 to 15. Quickly. First Peter chapter number 2. Yes. Verse 1 to 15. 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guilt and hypocrisy and Hold envies. On. Hold on. Lay aside what? All malice. All malice. How many of you here are keeping malice with somebody? Be bold. Today is the day of repentance. I have not even started the message. Though. <laughs> if you are keeping malice with somebody, that is going to come up here to pray for people. And today is your chance. When I was preparing for this message, God told me some things. There are people here who must repent in their activities. In this church. Otherwise, judgment is coming. Keep away all malice. Yes, talk to me. The next one. All girl. All girl. All hypocrisies. All hypocrisies. And envies. Hold on. And all evil speakings. Hold on. There are hypocrites in the body of Christ. They call the man of God daddy. But behind him, they call him by his real name. David Udodo. Let me tell you something. There's one pastor that, you know, brought his... Uh, he, asked, he has a property and asked his, the man living there to go because the man was no longer paying rent. He didn't even ask for the outstanding rent. He said, just go. A member of his church. The man came to me after I wrote him a letter and said, uh, uh, so, so I, he now said, I came to talk with you about the letter I received from you uh, concerning the property I occupied, the property that belongs to Mr. Nelson. Let me not add the second name. Some of you might know him. I said, did you say Mr. Nelson? I thought he was your pastor. He said, oh, I'm sorry, pastor. I said, no, you're not sorry. You are intentional. You came to beg. If you saw him one-on-one, -on -one, you would have said, pastor, sir. You won't stop at pastor. You will add, sir. But before me now, you're saying Mr. Nelson. 
and you think God will not judge you. I said, if you don't pack out of that property, I, whatever I have learned in the 30 years as a lawyer, I will break it on your head and I know you will not survive. He packed the next day. I said, I don't care where you're going, just go. You celebrate the man of God in his presence. But behind him, you are the one saying stories about him. You are a hypocrite. A hypocrite. Even the devil is ashamed of you. That's how far you've gone. Let me tell you, I'm a village boy. I was raised in the village. Like I said, I lived in the village, but I did not allow the village to live in me. One promise I made God is, if I am wrong, I'll be sincerely wrong. If I am right, I'll be sincerely right. Make sure when you're wrong, you are sincerely wrong. Because if you're not sincerely wrong, you're a hypocrite. It means you knew the right thing to do, yet you chose the other. I said, God bearing me witness, the little way that I serve him. When I came here, the prophet of God ministered to me and I began to see massive changes. And then, when I call him daddy, God knows it's not out of any pretense because he didn't ask me to call him daddy. Even Apostle Frank, who is my very good friend, did not tell him, we used to call him daddy. I chose to by my conviction and by my belief in him. Now, all the pastors that I have worked with, I have not been able to speak any wrong word. Heaven bearing me witness. It's a very dangerous thing to do. It's a very dangerous thing to do. Do you know how they start commissioners in government or ministers? Bad talk. Uh, you know, His Excellency should have. He should have. have. You know, you should have. You should have. He said, he should have a bit. Okay. Wait. They go and tell the, the governor, say, they said, somebody's now helping you to run your government. And he didn't even say it in public. He was telling me. It's okay, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to restructure for effective, uh, you know, relationship with the people and to deliver the dividends of democracy. democracy. Commissioner XYZ actually are hereby God. sacked. Is that what you want? Do you want God to sack you? Then stop talking. Tell somebody, stop talking. Stop talking. Say it like you mean it. Stop, stop talking. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So number one thing to prepare for the miraculous is that God uses a man. Oh boy. If God wants to visit you, he will use a man. And if you despise the man he has sent, you miss the miracle. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Look, I have been able to deal with envy. Some of you here envy Ijiyo. Some of you are even angry. The day he said that uh, he came from Abuja with uh, a G-Wagon. Some of you, even in your dream, you've not seen a G-Wagon before. You cannot dream to that level now. People dream according to their level. Levels. <laughs> Some of you that rise are chasing your dream. That's your level. <laughs> My pastor used to tell me several years back, apostle, he said, a child of God, if you are in the dream and you were driving a limousine and suddenly the limousine turned to a bicycle, wake up from the dream. Say, oh boy, Satan, that bicycle is yours. The limousine is mine. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can I ever dream of riding a bicycle for limousine what? Limousine and bicycle. Ah. For what now? God forbid. Is that the way you want to serve God? With bicycle. Eh? If, if our daddy came here with bicycle and he prayed for a jeep for you, won't you be, won't you be say, Pastor, eh, you want me to buy a jeep? But thought of your bicycle. You can change your bicycle. Let's begin from there. Lift up your right and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it like a minute. I'm 
I'm blessed. I honor my pastor. Rise to your feet and say, I honor my pastor. I will pray for my pastor. I will give to my pastor. I will give to my pastors. Can you say amen? amen. Sit down. Do you know when, <laughs> oh boy, when you are, <laughs> this matter of talking against pastors, <laughs> it's not only the talking, no. the listening self follow. When I come to you, as, I, as close as I am, with our daddy here, and I'll come to you, say, actually, actually, you know, daddy should have, daddy should have, and you are listening, you're already vicariously involved. See my learned friend here, he know waiting on me. That is all of you, you are as, as guilty as me. The talker, the talkie, and the talker are completely guilty. But wait a why somebody go invite you to come and chop? Now you go come to pick meat and fish without his permission. You didn't get what I said. I grew up in the village. And not this modern family where your daughter, your boy can come and carry food and eat anyhow. We eat together. And if you have family here, reinvent eating together. The family that eats and, you know, pray together, stay together. See, I'm an Obama man. We have rules. When you are eating with your father, your, your area of jurisdiction is the Gary. Yes, sir. Somebody say Gary. No you don't take fish hey. that you are not giving. Hey. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. If you try it, you don't dare. You will know that there's a difference between six and half a dozen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you, you sir. You can't go there. Our daddy invited us to see what God has done. Come, let's enjoy. Now they lift meat, they lift fish, they even talk. And you think God will just overlook you? That's why some of you, I don't care how long you have stayed in church. God is not looking for those who have stayed long in church. He's looking for those whose heart he can touch. Men that he can use. Pillars, not caterpillars. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apostle. Yes, sir. Touch that pillar. Shake him. Shake him now. You know not shake. You shake? You know not shake. Pillars don't shake. Yes, sir. Apostle. Yes, sir. Remove the pillar. No form of hand, though. Remove them. You know Greek come out. Pillars are hey. not removed. They don't go. They are constant. They are there. Come rain. Come shine. That should they have believed. They insist it must be good. <laughs> That's why I do not believe in disadvantages. I have never been disadvantaged. Even as a village boy. When city boys come, it's an opportunity to learn how to live a different kind of life. I don't envy them. I have always been blessed. Even without Shishi. Even without Naira. Even when I didn't go to school. Even when a lawyer cheated my father. And I asked my father, how can we recover money? And lawyer will take one third. I mean, 33 one third. <laughs> my life friend. No be son of the collect. <laughs> Daddy, I got angry. My father explained to me. He said, yes, because an old teacher. He spoke Prince English. He said, yes, he, he, he's entitled to it. He has to collect like that. If you want to take like that, then be a lawyer. Be a lawyer. Then there was a righteous anger. Somebody say righteous anger. Righteous anger. I don't even know what it means to be a lawyer. I said, this lawyer, I go be him. How many of you are making up your mind? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> no, seriously. You have to make up your mind where you want to go. There's nobody who gets to the park and tells the bosses, take me out of park. Where are you going? Nowhere. Just take me. Everybody's going somewhere. Say, I'm going somewhere. You didn't say it. I am going somewhere. Say it like you mean it. I am going somewhere. No need for envy. You envy the man of God. You envy his wife. He envy prayed the stars. He envy everybody. Is your name envy? Huh? 
I thought your, your name was Chukwemeka. God has done well. Why are you changing it to Chukwemeka Envy? As if that is not bad enough. You talk. And you expect God to visit you. Apostle, please, read for me. Second Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 19 to 26. There's no time, but there's a lot I would have liked to share. Second Timothy this. chapter number 2. Yes. Verse, verse 19. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Yes. Having this seal, mm -hmm. the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yes. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yes. Go ahead. I said 19 to 26. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. Go ahead. But also of wood and of earth. Yes. And some, of, some to honor and some to dishonor. Some to honor and some to dishonor. Hold on. You will continue. In a great house. Oh. This is the word of God. He is saying that as we are gathered like this. There are people who are gathered with us physically, but they are not gathered with us spiritually. There are men and women who have come. I've, I hear that the prophet is, he sees vision. Let me go and try his power. They are here. They are even looking at me. There are those who came with genuine problems. There are also those who came to compare prophecy. Prophet D-Line told me like this. Prophet or cricket told me like this. Let me see what this man will say. There are also those who just, they are, they are church inspectors. Okay, as the message is going on, this church try. Look at their backdrop. Where the people are beautifully dressed. That's all they are doing. God will come to visit them. They are not aware because they themselves are busy visiting things. You didn't get it. Right on, sir. Pastor, when, the, when daddy comes here, rather than get spiritual and get their blessing, they say, man, see shoe, oh boy. See shoe. <laughs> this man fine, oh. So, even when God talks to them, they are not hearing we are because they are busy looking at other things. Somebody said that creativity is a search for alternatives. Distinction, focus is the removal of all distractions. When I sit here, I don't see, particularly when that is ministry, I don't see anyone but him. Why? I have issues to deal with. And I don't have time to start looking at how people are dressed. There's no time. If I asked what I wanted to do, I'll go to a party. <laughs> 